tuning in to my channel. My name is Tara and I'm a licensed realtor in the state of Louisiana and I'm here to give you some tips on moving, especially my family out there that is dealing with the PCS. I remember when my husband was active duty and it was PCS season and when our turn came around, it was really hectic and sometimes stressful. Um, but as the years went on with our military, um, with our military moves, it became a little easier and I developed a um, streamlined approach to our moving and I hope that the information that I share with you today will be helpful to you as well. Don't forget to say hello in the comments and you know just ask any questions that you have. If I didn't go over something that you're curious about, please feel free to um, ask me in the comment section below and I'm going to go ahead and get started with my tips. <laughs> okay, so tip number one, start planning early. Yep, that's right. If you are the spouse of the active duty military member, then as soon as they have an idea or they even mention to you that there's a possibility of them coming up on orders, go ahead and start planning. Of course, they may not know what duty station they're going to be going to. That's okay. You don't need to know that at that point. Um, you know, you just need to start getting in the mindset of, um, you know, if you need to offload some items, um, if you need to start streamlining some things as far as like with documents, um, if you need to just get some things in line so when it's time for you to start the moving process those little things that you could take care of uh, beforehand will be out of the way and i'm not talking about anything that is um, directly related to the next duty station that you're going to i'm just talking about um, the fact of sometimes when we move we end up taking items that we don't necessarily need to take with us because you know we just didn't have time to offload those items like i said as soon as your um significant other spouse um you know talks to you and says hey i think it's almost time for me to you know come come up on orders you start planning okay it won't hurt to pre-plan it doesn't hurt at all what hurts is if you don't pre-plan all of that's going to be crammed together and you're just going to I don't know it's going to become very overwhelming for you let me tell you something <laughs> we've moved several times and at the beginning of our marriage we would move with everything and kind of sort through things when we got to the next duty station that is not the move honey that is not the move go ahead and pre-plan offload some items don't wait and let everybody let them just cram everything um in the packing boxes and you just sort through them when you get to where you're going because you know you're gonna have that downtime don't do that organize your items before they come to pack you up i'm telling a little bit about myself i <laughs> I'm not a very, uh, oh, I'm not a very organized person when it comes down to my items. So that's why I had to train myself to do that. But like I said, just go ahead and start early. As soon as you hear the word PCS come out of their mouth, start planning. <laughs> okay, so now's the time for you to get those documents together, those important documents like birth certificates, um, your marriage certificate, passports you know um all those important items that you always need to have accessible to you just make sure you have those documents for every person that's going to be moving with you um this is especially important if you are relocating outside of the country you want to make sure that you have all of your important documents on hand and accessible to you before you actually receive the orders to move because when you receive the orders to move you're going to be on a specific timeline and some of those documents take some time to um, retrieve if you don't have them accessible to you i know a couple of times <laughs> i'm gonna admit it a couple of times your girl had to look for her birth certificate yes i said it i said it i said it and then 
you know, I've been in a situation too where I had to go ahead and order it from um, the state that I was born in. And it took some time for it to come in, but if that was a document that I needed in order to get a passport or do some other things at my at the next location that I was moving to, that would have added a little more stress and anxiety um, you know, to the whole moving process. So just look through everything, just make sure you have your important documents on everybody that's gonna be moving with you. And um, if you don't, take measures to get access to those documents because you don't wanna be um, having that on your list of things to do when you have about five days to, um, you know, exit out of the, the duty station that you're at and looking for documents shouldn't be on your list. So you found out where you're gonna be moving to. Now the fun begins. It's time for you to do your research. And what you need to look at is the schools. Look at the, yeah, I'm gonna say this up front. Look at the shopping, the restaurants in the area. You know, if you're moving to somewhere um, where, a, well, a lot of the duty stations are located in small town areas. So um, just look at the distance between um, the areas that's more densely populated that you're gonna have to travel to for like, you know, your major shopping or to have more of a fine dining experience. Go ahead and research all of that before, um, before you get there. That way, when you arrive to the location, you won't be surprised, you won't be shocked, you won't be taken back, you won't be like, you know, it won't turn into one of those situations where you just wanna put your hands on your spouse. <laughs> for taking you there and not telling you where you were going. You don't want to do that. You want to do your own research because that service member is actually um, in the midst of looking at their looking at their next duty station as their new job to report to. Yes, they want their family to be happy and um, comfortable at the new, at the next duty station, but what you have to keep in mind is that's not their main focus. Okay, they're actually looking at their new job. And yes, as a as a spouse, um, you will have to, you know, sometimes we do have to um, look at the job market. Well, we do have to look at the job markets in the uh, new areas that we're moving to. However, that's not number one on our list. You know, we're looking at the other things like the restaurants, the shopping, um, you know, Things like traffic, the schools, you know, neighborhoods, you know, um, just just different things. We're looking at the move totally different. So um, it would be a good idea to go ahead and start doing your research um, beforehand, before you even start packing, before you even, you know, before you get in the mix of really, really, you know, buckling down and preparing for the move. As soon as you find out where you're going, do your research. And it would be a good idea for you to um, just explore options. If you are not choosing to um, relocate uh, to the military duty station and live on the duty station, um, now would be a good idea for you to start exploring and, and um, just researching realtors in the area. And I always suggest that you reach out to a couple of them and check out the response rate and see, you know, if they're responding back with some good information and they're responding back to your questions in a timely manner, then that's what I would say. Um, then that's what I would suggest that you keep them on your list as, you know, potential as a potential realtor to uh, choose to work with um, in order to find your family a great home. Now, you don't always necessarily look at your realtor as being someone that is strictly going to be, um, you know, finding you something to buy. You know, sometimes when we relocate to different duty stations, we want to buy and sometimes we don't. Um, so make sure you ask that question up front to your realtor too. Um, you can go ahead and ask them whether or not they um, actually work with rental properties. And if they don't, then they should be able to uh, refer you over to another realtor that um, does handle uh, rental properties or a great property management company. But make sure you do all this in a timely manner that way you'll have time to process it you know you'll have time to really do your research and figure out who it is that you want to work with because the worst thing in the world for you to do is to just wait until it's time for you to actually move and then you reach out 
and try to find somebody to help you nobody's really responding or whatever it is that you're looking for is not available but it was available at the time when you started the process of moving you know that's really just nerve-wracking and it it'll it'll dampen the mood of the whole moving experience you know you want to try to keep the moving process as as um, streamlined as possible and you also don't want to add more stress to the service member as well too because like I said before they're looking at the move totally different they're looking at their new job they're, they're they have so many other things on their mind besides um, you know what we're thinking about thinking about as being um, the family of that service member something else that you have to keep in mind is moving is expensive so now is not the time to make that major purchase, especially if you are contemplating or entertaining the idea of purchasing a property at your next duty station. Right now would be a great time for you to research your uh, credit and make sure that you have some items cleared up and you have a, a good idea as to where you stand as far as your credit is concerned and if you need to take care of some things go ahead and try to do that before you actually make the move to your next duty station also make sure that you allow yourself some time to de-stress every single day after you find out that you're moving i know it might sound like that might be might not be something that's possible for you to do but you need to make it a possibility if you have if you have to set your timer for 10 minutes just make sure that you take a moment just to not pick up your phone <laughs> not answer any emails and just relax for at least 10 minutes and you know I turn on some soothing music or just go into go for a walk or something or you know just go and sit somewhere where you can have peace and solitude and just relax and you know I'm a person that likes to meditate so I do that daily but during a stressful time it's especially important for you to just take some time to um, spend some time with yourself you can even you know do yoga and um, you know just just find some things that will find something to do that takes your mind off of the moving process that way when you get back into the swing of things and you get back into um, planning for the move you'll be refreshed you'll be able to handle it you won't be you know snappy <laughs> when someone asks you a question about moving and um, something else that you can do is also just make sure that you have that conversation with your neighbors as well too and your friends that are in the area um, if you can just make sure you let them know as soon as possible that you are going to be leaving you know they may end up being a helpful resource to you some of them maybe uh, may have been at the duty station that you are going to be uh, PCSing to so it's a good idea for you know to get some information from them um, I'll give you an example we are in the state of Louisiana never thought that we would ever live in the state of Louisiana because we were born and raised on the East Coast and we ended up just kind of staying here but anyway back on you may get back on subject <laughs> um before we got here uh, i'll be honest with you my husband was not excited about coming to fort polk he was not excited at all but me i love the fact that i was moving again because you know i'm not moving with the same mindset that my spouse was moving with you know i'm thinking of it being a new adventure being able to explore different opportunities you know we have new orleans and you know baton rouge and there's just so many different things um that was going through my mind as far as you know the fun things that we would be doing my husband on the uh, on the opposite end was thinking about his next duty station what assignment he was going to have what job he was going to do etc etc so um use this time use this time to communicate together too about your thoughts about your feelings about the move and be honest and include the kids in the conversation as well too prepare them 
for the move. You know, I came to the area with the full understanding that it was going to be a small town. Okay, I was already prepared for that. But, you know, when we got here, that's another story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, when we got here, but I already knew that it was going to be a small town. And that's something that I've gotten used to over the years, but you know, it's just things, it's just things like that that's super, super important. You know, you even need to research, um, you know, the, uh, the, the internet services and, and things that are going to keep you accustomed to your same lifestyle. You know, a lot of us work from home. So um, you also need to make sure that you look into the companies that provide services for you so you can continue to, you know, do your job and, and, and be able to um, participate in the same activities that you have been participating in at you know your current duty station so it's just a lot that goes into it and it's just a good idea for you to communicate have that conversation have that conversation with friends and family have that conversation with the kids you know and one thing that i forgot to mention also look into things that you're gonna have to have in place to move with pets um i have moved a couple of times with my fur babies um and one time we were actually moving out of the country we were moving to uh, south america and uh, i had to well get things in place for my pet because my pet had to go into quarantine for about 30 days after she arrived and you know i had to prepare myself mentally as well too because i wasn't going to see my baby for a little bit because she was going to be you know in quarantine but that's something that you have to you know, talk about, talk about, go over it in your head, make that phone call to the place that they're going to be going to and, and do your research on the place. That way, when you drop the, you know, when you drop your, your, your fur baby off to that location, it won't be that question mark. Like, you know, as far as like, oh my gosh, did I do the right thing? Did I pick, did I pick the right place for my pet to be at? Or should I, should I have gone with this other company that I just saw, but I didn't call, you know, so many things go through, goes through your mind. I mean, I, I can remember whew, I can remember being stressed out because okay I'm a I'm sorry I'm talking but I have to explain myself I, <laughs> I used to have a um, I used to have a basset hound and we were moving to South America and you know I almost made the decision to not bring my fur baby with me because of everything that we had to do um, to get her into the country but we decided that it was just going to be too painful for me to let my baby go i mean actually the family was over there playing with my dog in the backyard and i saw them playing with my dog and i almost lost it so my baby brooke shields had to come with me yes the dog's name was brooke shields that's another story from another time <laughs> anyway um, anyway, um, I did my research and I called around, I, you know, I, I, I found a company that was able to pick my dog up and transport her, um, through the entire moving process as far as like getting her from the airport and taking her over to the quarantine, uh, place. And I really felt good about just letting my baby go and uh go be with strangers for a little bit because i had that communication with um with the agency before i just arrived and just had to you know hand her off to strangers you know it was really good for me i felt good i felt at ease and um i was comfortable and it's the same thing like with the schools with your kids you know don't just look online and see what everybody is just, you know, just talking about like, oh, I can't stand that school because of that teacher, blah, blah, blah. Actually, you know, when you read stuff like that, you don't know the backstory. So you shouldn't take any um, consideration to, you know, the stuff that you read online that people just post just because you need to take the initiative to reach out and have that direct communication with those people that way when you are arriving at that new duty station you can have that connection with whoever it was that you have been communicating with before your arrival and you'll also be able to hopefully you'll have a good experience with that person but if you don't you'll also be able to pick up on certain things that will allow you the 
opportunity to redirect uh, your focus as far as like getting your kids settled in school. So, you know, mainly this video was about just preparing you for a PCS move, but it, it also works the same way if you're a civilian, civilian and you are going to be moving to a different city, you got a new job and it's all exciting at first, but then you got a plan and you got to move. And the main thing that I can tell you is start ahead. When you have an idea that you're moving, make sure you just start planning. <laughs> I hope this video was very helpful for you. Don't forget to say hello in the comments. And like I said before, if there was something that you need more information on that I mentioned during this video, feel free to leave your question down below. Also, there is a link in the description box if you'd like to talk one-on-one -on -one with me about your move or if there's something that I can help you with. Um, and I appreciate you watching and I can't wait to chat with you guys again soon. <laughs>